simplify. I think I'm going to rewrite this. So we have 4x times 2x minus 1 plus 2x minus 1 all squared. And I want you to look at this as a set into two different components. So the first thing we have to do is find the GCF. And what is common between my first to my second? They both have what? 2x minus 1. So then I want you to go ahead and open up a bracket. You don't have to, but I like the bracket because parentheses inside of parentheses for me, it's kind of confusing. So from my first term, didn't I already take out 2x minus 1? Yeah. So I have remaining 4x. From my second term, I've already taken out one of the 2x minus 1. So I have one remaining. And then at this point, all I need to do is simplify the bracket. And when I do, we get 4x plus 2x minus 1. And that's going to lead us to 6x minus 1. And you simply copy what you factored out at the beginning. Oh, that's a parenthesis. And we're done. <laughs> fix it. If you did something different, fix it, please. Wait, I did something different, but not the right answer. Got the right answer. Tell me what you did. Uh, so, did you distribute and double distribute? Yeah. Did you combine like terms and factor? Yeah. Yes, you can. That takes a little more work in my opinion. If you want to distribute first and then factor it out, go for it. Okay? All right. But in the end, we're going to get the exact same answer. Let's now go over number seven. On number seven, it says we have, this is number five, and that's seven. X to the fifth minus X to the third minus X squared plus the one. So if y'all remember grouping, this is already set for you guys to um, work on grouping style. So let's group them into sets. From my first set, what is common between these two for me to take out? X to the third. So then... From x to the fifth, if I take out x to the third, I get x squared. When I take everybody out, we get the understood one. It's not zero. Now, do I have a common factor on my next one? No, but this sign has to be factored out. So when I do, I get x squared. Should it be plus one or minus one if we factored out the negative? Minus one. Minus one. So then... Let's put the understood one. And if y'all remember back in algebra one, even algebra two, as long as you have the parentheses are identical, you've done the right thing. So our answer will have x cubed minus the one. And then I have x squared minus the one. Now, some of you guys might think I can stop right here. The lesson from yesterday was we have difference of cube and we have difference of squared. Yes? Mm -hmm. So let's do difference of cube real quick. And if I lose you on this, most likely you are not paying attention on the video or you are completely lost. So the first one that I, that I want to work on is going to be our difference of cube first. And our difference of cube tells us we have x. And y'all remember so? Yes. So same sign, opposite, always positive. And I must have the one right here. And the next one is basically x times x, which is x squared. The last one is 1 times 1, which is 1. The middle is combination between these two. So x times 1 is simply 1x. So it's negative 1. It doesn't matter. What's up? Would it be negative x in the middle? No. Because that negative already was same, opposite, and always positive. We can't change the sign after that, okay? So then on my pink, I'm gonna do difference of two squares. So the rule for difference of two square is one's a minus, one's a plus, which one comes first, it doesn't matter. So we have a minus and a plus. So we take x and one, x and one. And for me, I'm okay with this. But if you want to go on further and put something together that is alike, what is alike that I can put as a square? The x minus 1s. 
So we have x minus 1 all squared. Oops. And I think I'm going to put the smaller term first. You don't have to. And that will be the best answer. But I will be okay with the one right above. 